lady in Soweto. It was as a result of a chemical called organophosphate. Now, the department is still waiting on lab results of swabs taken at spaza shops in Naledi to see if they are the source of the foodborne illness that claimed the lives of the children. The children are alleged to have consumed contaminated snacks from spaza shops in the area prior to them falling ill and the outbreak led to an inspection of all spaza shops in the area. Mutualedi shared their preliminary report with the media in Kempton Park on how things East Rand this morning. SABC News reporter Hasina Kori was there and filed this report. The death of six children in Naledi Soweto from foodborne illnesses in October led to a multidisciplinary investigation to ascertain the cause of the deaths. In a press briefing on Monday, Health Minister announced that an extremely deadly chemical, organophosphate, was found to be the agent responsible for the deaths. The group of substances usually used as pesticide in agricultural environment. Organophosphate it's not one substance, but a group of substances which are usually used in agriculture or as pesticides. The organophosphate identified in this instance is called Terbufos, T-E-R-B-U-F-O-S, T-E-R-B-U-F-O-S, Terbufos. All the six children died of Terbufos ingestion. In the past weeks, several chemicals were banded around as possible causes of death. Some were even found in some retailers. The question of how this chemical ended up in the bodies of the Naledi children is still being investigated. Uh, it is not supposed to be found ordinarily in domestic substances. I know sometimes they mix it in paint and all that, but I want you to understand it. Organophosphate is not a substance that must really be used domestically. Uh, now, why are spaza shops buying it? Our theory is, until we are proven otherwise, is that they are using it as pesticides to kill rats, specifically because I want to believe that there are rats in quite a number of spaza shops, since communities it's also been sold to communities for killing rats, whereby they are not preferring rat eggs. So we believe, we believe it came into Spaza shop in that manner. But as I'm saying, we still have to prove scientifically it, its presence there. Four people were arrested last week for possession of other chemicals used as pesticide. However, this is not a ganophosphate. As an integrated team, we were also advised by the department that uh, these suspects could be released. On a warning, we released them on J534, and they ultimately paid a 2,000 rand um, admission of guilty. The reason is that the suspects be released as they are not the manufacturers for those chemicals. The incident highlighted the issues around the irregulated township economy. A special team is currently working on registering spaza shops across the country. To assist spaza shops with registrations, because it is important that they be registered so that we can know in a particular street, the street there are so many spaza shops and who's running them. We're working with the ward councillors, with the CDWs, including the wholesale and retail CETA, which has just sponsored an uh, appointment of 200 unemployed graduates to complement the existing, existing personnel at the local level. The ministry is still awaiting results from swabs taken at the sponsor shops to determine if the chemical was present. Hasina Gori, SABC News, Johannesburg. Let's speak now to Professor Lucia Anilic, who's a food hygiene expert and one of the country's experienced food microbiologists who's joining us live now to answer some of the questions you have as well as the questions that we have tonight following that briefing earlier on today. Prof, good evening to you and thank you so much for your time. I mean, one thinks about the fact that people shouldn't be getting their hands on these pesticides as we are hearing that these are banned, but what makes them so lethal? Um, good evening. Yes, the, the lethal... Most chemicals that are used in the pesticide industry are designed 
to kill something, to control something. It could be an insect, it could be another plant like a weed or nematicides, things. Those are to control worms in the soil so that they don't eat the plant and so on. Uh, fungicides are very similar as well. They could be uh, used on crops to kill various fungi or molds that could affect the crop and the yield of the crop. And not only that, but also affect the safety of the crop for human consumption. So that's what they are originally designed for. And that is their job. And that's what makes them so toxic. Mm. But we have a very, very well-organized uh, system in South Africa of pesticide manufacturing companies. And for every single pesticide that is manufactured for the agricultural sector in particular, they have to be registered with the Department of Agriculture under Act 36. And that then requires further investigation by the Department of Health and their regulatory system to ensure that these products are well labeled, that there are warning signs on those products as to what to do, what not to do, how to use them, how not to use them, et cetera, et cetera. So these things are pretty well organized. And it sounds like not everyone then um, should be able to get their hands on them. And that may suggest that potentially there might be lapses in the system if people are able to get their hands on them? Absolutely. There must be a way of uh, supply through to these people in the domestic environment because they are not supposed to be used in the domestic environment. It's like any other toxin really that is out there. Uh, you know, petrol, for example. Petrol, if you drink petrol, you're definitely going to get sick and you might even die from that because it was never designed to be used as a beverage. It is used for your car, obviously. So these are the issues that we have to face. These are regulated products that are used in a completely illegal and unregulated manner. And why are, are, you know, are children more susceptible to, to, to pesticide toxicity um, and, and other environmental toxicants, for example, than adults? Well, it, simply because of their size. I mean, they are small, they don't have a very strong immune system, and uh, their tissues are still multiplying rapidly, so their uptake of these chemicals is a lot faster. Uh, and, of course, their body weight so most of these chemicals, in fact, all of them are uh, developed with body weight in mind. So we do say the toxicity of a chemical is so many milligrams or micrograms per kilogram body weight. So you can definitely see that somebody who weighs 12 kilograms is going to have a far more significant effect than somebody who weighs 80 kilograms. And, and that's just the nature of, of what we are, of the human being and what and what we are composed of. So, Prof, is there also, um, you know, some specifications as to say those who get their hands on the on these, um, you know, particular pesticides, for example, and are trained in them, are they then told how to store them as well? Absolutely. The trained professionals that are also registered with the Department of Agriculture and are licensed to handle these uh, chemicals must also understand and know how to store them, how to transport them, and how to use them on site and under what conditions. So, for example, if you're using a fumigant in the food industry, the food manufacturing industry, large food manufacturing plants, some of these fumigants are very toxic and therefore equipment has to be covered the room has to be completely evacuated. No workers may be in the room. And then these plants are fumigated for a 24-hour period, for example, by trained professionals. And all of these uh, precautionary measures have to be in place before such a fumigant is allowed to be uh, released into that environment. So we're hearing about, for example, Aldi Cup, we hear about carbamates, um, you know, among others. Are there any other dangerous substances that we should be aware of? Well, most of these things are dangerous if not used in the correct manner. But what I want to make very clear here is Aldi Cup as a carbamate is illegal in South Africa. 
it is no longer produced in the country and it was banned 10 years ago. So if it's getting into the country, it's coming in illegally and it's not registered with the Department of Agriculture as a pesticide that may be used in the country for any application whatsoever. Organophosphates, on the other hand, are registered and permitted in this country, as in many, many other countries in the world, under specific conditions uh, and used by specific uh, pra uh, practitioners that are able to use these products in the correct manner. And that's the differentiation I really want to make here. Mm. So, so and, Prof, pardon me, it should concern us then that we're hearing of cases where people have, you know, are said to have consumed aldecap. Absolutely. It is, it is a highly toxic material and uh, you only need a, about a, a tenth of a teaspoon to actually hurt an adult very, very badly and potentially cause death quite quickly. So we mustn't discount the fact that because we found or the Department of Health found organophosphates in the, in the uh, autopsy results of these uh, tragically tragic children who died from this uh, uh, pesticide, we mustn't discount the fact that aldicarb is still out there. It is still extremely toxic. And uh, I, would, I would hate to have the focus removed from aldicarb and only focused on organophosphates because the, the one and a half kilograms of aldicarb that was confiscated from a mall in Johannesburg is extremely extremely concerning. Prof, I do understand we have a voice note. It's a question um, from a viewer. Let's listen in. Hello. Can SABC News please uh, help us to get the, be informed about how we can easily, how our children can easily I uh, recognize when these organophosphates are present in food, please. So you should be able to smell that these organophosphates are in the product and then avoid eating those products completely if they smell strange. There's no other way of knowing whether an, an organophosphate is in a food product because you can't see it. You can't necessarily... Uh, well, you could probably taste it if it smells bad, but by that time, you might have already ingested some of it. And depending on the concentration that you are ingesting, it might actually already be hurting you and causing illness. So, Prof, how then do, do we know, um, you know, if it's food poisoning or poisoning? Well, it, it's a little bit of a grey area. This, you know, foodborne disease is usually caused by microorganisms of various kinds, including bacteria, viruses, fungi, their products, their toxins that they might produce in food. But we also understand that chemical contamination can also be regarded as foodborne disease. The difference here is that this chemical should never have been in the environment of the food. It should never have been stored or used in any way in the environment. So this is more what we would call an adulteration of food. In other words, something that should never have been there, but for this illegal reason, it is there. And therefore we regard it more as an adulteration of food rather than true food poisoning. Now, when it comes then to, of course, some of those who are concerned, who are saying that, um, you know, tonight, like Nkose Kona, for example, who says, I think they use these blends of pesticides to repel rodents in their warehouses. And this is an indictment uh, to the Department of Health to deploy their health inspectors to, to both spaza shops and the warehouses. Some are saying that um, if you are using this to repel rodents, you, you should also be taught how to do this correctly. Yes, you should, but you shouldn't be using it in the first place to repel rodents in a domestic environment, including a small spaza shop. We must also just be clear that the environmental health practitioners cannot be there every single day or, every, or once a week or even once a month. So they will inspect and then uh, according to Regulation 638, which is your basic food hygiene, transportation and storage, regulation. And if they see things are looking good, 
then they will uh, issue the so-called certificate of acceptability. But then the onus remains on the owner of the store to keep uh, aware and, and to comply with all the best food safety practices revolving around manufacturing of food, packing of food, even repacking if they buy food in bulk and then repack it into smaller packs. First of all, those smaller packs will probably be unlabeled. But if they are going to be contaminated because there's an illegal pesticide in the environment, then that is a very little that what the environmental health practitioner can do at that point in time. The only thing they can do is investigate together with the police and have a concerted effort to cut this, the head of the snake off completely of this supply chain. So they have to go back and find out how is these how are these products getting into these domestic environments and stop that from happening and have to go back and look at how does algae, algae carb, which is an illegal pesticide, get into the country in the first place and cut that supply chain off completely. And then there needs to be consistent checking and monitoring that these supply chains remain cut off and closed. Otherwise, this may pop up again in a year or two or however long it may take. So, Prof, um, you know, for parents and even teachers at school who've had to deal with some of these cases, so if a child has consumed, um, you know, this, this, this substance, some parents um, or teachers will rush or even adults to give the child milk. So, firstly, yes. let's talk about what symptoms to look out for and what do you need to do immediately to try and assist? Well, uh, I'm not a toxicologist, so in terms of treatment, I know that atropine works extremely well. So, but by that time, you actually have to get the child to a healthcare facility because they are the only ones who can administer atropine. So the symptoms to look out for for this type of chemical poisoning is nausea, diarrhea, excessive vomiting and foaming of the mouth and any blue turning blue because that means that oxygen is cut off from the system. Uh, there is a point, I have to say, of no return. If the child gets to the healthcare facility too late, atropine can be administered, but it most likely will not help if the nervous system has started to shut down. So it's absolutely vital that if a child is complaining of these symptoms and is starting to vomit, that that child is taken to hospital immediately, as fast as possible, so that the medical doctors can administer atropine or any other treatment that they might feel is appropriate for those particular symptoms. And Prof, uh, some of the viewers are asking the difference between a best before and sell by date on, on the labeling of, 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 food system, of, of foods. Look, rather. Uh, th that too is a, is a very, very good question. The sell by date is a date that the retailer places on a package of food as to the time that they wish that product to be sold and off the shelves. The use by date and best before dates are the important ones that consumers must take note of. The use-by date is about food safety. In other words, you'll typically find a use-by date on perishable products because we know that they go, uh, that they might become unsafe quite quickly because they are perishable. They don't have a long shelf life in the refrigerator. The best before date, on the other hand, is about food quality. It's not about safety. So if a product has exceeded its best before date, it does not mean that it suddenly has become unsafe for human consumption. It's just not at its peak quality any longer. And that's important because the use by date is the one that you really want to keep an eye on. But having said all of that, this intoxication has nothing to do with use by dates or best before dates. Because a product that is manufactured under the correct environment will have had a use-by date and best-before date de uh, determined via various challenge tests 
and things that laboratories do normally when you want to have a product or, or, or a food product manufactured. You need to understand its shelf life, when can it spoil, when can it become unsafe, etc. And those best before dates and use by dates are then determined accordingly. All and right. intoxication of this nature has absolutely nothing to do with those dates because that chemical should never have been there in mm. the first place. Mm. And uh, quite concerning there, but Prof, appreciate your time um, and really just arming us with information really as parents watch to see what can they do and also which substance to look out for. But thank you so much for explaining um, it to us so succinctly. That's uh, Professor Lucia Anelich there, who is a food safety expert and one of the country's experienced food microbiologists.